Hello, Trash Future listeners. Nate here. Quick heads up. We recorded this episode at Voxel Comedy, and much like the last episode, I critically forgot to turn on the recorder until about two minutes in. So we, of course, have a backup track. That backup track came from a camcorder. It's going to sound a little rough for the first two minutes. So just FYI, it does get better very quickly, and the rest of the show sounds normal. Just wanted you to understand that before you thought you had to commit yourself to a solid hour of having your ears destroyed. I apologize once again for the mistake. I'm an idiot. Anyway, hope you enjoy this live show, which was recorded last week, March 11th, at Voxel Comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome to the stage, Brendan O'Neill. Hello, Brendan O'Neill ain't afraid of coronavirus. Uh, yeah, he's only afraid of one thing. Uh, find out what it is. Uh, so, um, uh, this week, the chattering classes of this once great nation have been again all of a flutter in a wild panic about the coronavirus. These Islington Stalinists of Twitter.com are obsessed that Boris Johnson is incompetent and that Britain is in a worse position than Italy to deal with the virus. How can that be so? Italy was run into the ground for years by a horny buffoon, whereas we have only recently elected Boris Johnson. <laughs> If you ask me, we've well, actually recently prevented a much more dangerous disease spreading here from Europe, the disease of unelected Eurocrats making our laws. So what if everyone in Britain gets this disease? Have we not suffered before? Did we not survive the blitz? Foot and mouth, Tamagotchis? This, this is merely a blip in the history of our glorious nation. Loony left doctors are suggesting that mortality rates for the over 50s could be significant. But I don't think any self-respecting boomers will allow themselves to be carried off by this disease. Not after years of building their strength by imagining fighting World War II over and over again. <laughs> In an attempt to calm tensions, the government has bravely infected Nadine Dorries with the virus. <laughs> to once and for all prove that it isn't dangerous. Or at the very least, give her a warrior's death and entry into Tory Valhalla. <laughs> However, the vegan Khmer Rouge would have you believe that we need to stop the spread of the disease and to use government measures to contain it. But who are we to intervene in free market forces? (laughs) If consumers don't want the coronavirus, they will simply vote with their feet and get something else instead. Like chicken pox or a burrito. (laughs) To attempt to contain the coronavirus beyond this is nothing short of no platforming a biological phenomenon. and curtailing its freedom of speech. Should we deny something a fair hearing just because it's hazardous and nobody wants to go near it without wearing protective gear? I personally feel Amber Rudd deserved better. (laughs) Indeed, the Castroite scented candle purveyors of N1 are trying to silence this plucky virus, to curtail its rights, and worst of all, subject us to European-style quarantine. They want to turn up the temperature on the whole country to a level where the virus will die out. A temperature of 198.4 degrees. Thank you very much. Welcome to the stage, Trash Future! That's the longest period of shuffling before a show I've ever done. That's when I call Wedgie. (laughs) (laughs) And now you get to see me unlock my laptop. Mm. Ah, there we go. So... Hello to everyone here at Voxel Comedy Club who has braved the awful pandemic that is currently <laughs> ravaging our shores. Uh, are you all well? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's actually a very specific question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are if, you all well? If, if, you're, if you're not well, we've said not to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, always felt that our fans welcomed mask. death. <laughs> There's a guy wearing a mask, a person wearing a mask. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, everyone. Bane, he's a friend of the show. He, everyone, he everyone should be more like Devin. Uh, you no. have merely adopted the coronavirus. So, uh, <laughs> hello to everyone. It's us, that podcast. You know all about it, presumably. If not, welcome to the next hour. You've picked uh, a strange first show to come to. 
Mm. I'm going to defy death for this thing that I thought might be good on Eventbrite. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God bless the people who just go with the Eventbrite recommendations. It's happened to all of us. Some of us end up at comedy shows. Other people end up at orgies. (laughs) So, uh, we are here. It's uh, myself, Riley, Milo, Hussein, friend of the show and repeat guest. I believe three Pete now, Molly Goodfellow. Oh, my God. What a woo. Uh, I see who gets the applause. Exactly. The first time Molly came on the show, she walked in on me crying on Nate. <laughs> and I it's did. been an auspicious start. Friday is what we call it around the studio. <laughs> and also, a- everyone was like two hours late. Oh, hell yeah. I think because of the crying. Yeah. I assume because of the crying. <laughs> you were crying Real heads you were know late. what happened. Yeah. I was crying because we were so late. I just, I love, <laughs> I love punctuality. And of course, Nate, ably, ma- ably manning the boards. Hey. Trying. Yeah, um, yeah. It's what I find ve- very funny. Speaking of the coronavirus stuff, is I was reading about the government's prevention strategy today, and apparently, instead of doing things, what they've decided to do is engage the behavioral analytics unit at the government, <laughs> which basically the last thing they did was come up with an idea to send people a text message to file their tax returns on time. So basically, what they've done is they've said. Malcolm Gladwell, what should we do? (laughs) Well, actually, you can't get the coronavirus if you go to space. (laughs) Look, the the virus needs oxygen to breathe, so really, actually, what you have to do in order to stop an epidemic is you have to divert 25% of the national budget to Elon Musk specifically. Yeah, we've launched all the old people in a capsule into space, (laughs) but unfortunately we've launched them in there with all the known reserves of the coronavirus. (laughs) Government spokesperson was quoted as saying, this is the last thing we wanted to happen. (laughs) (laughs) We do not officially agree with that idea. Uh, All right, so, as per, as per, I have sourced yet another of these started ups. Um, so I'm going to uh, do a couple of uh, blanked outlines for anyone who's not familiar with the show. These jokers are going to try to guess exactly what this thing does, and usually they're going to fail miserably, although Alice has a worrying trend of getting them right now. I don't like That's why that. she's banned from the live show. <laughs> <laughs> we have to edit her out. We have to silence women. So... Um, it, I'm going to say... Cool. <laughs> the company is Bear Robotics. That's B-E-A-R. And, Molly, as the guest, you have the first guess. Well, I just have to guess off Bear Robotics. Yes. Uh, do not show what it is yet, of course. Um, is it a robot bear? <laughs> yeah, we're going, for the, uh, we're going for the layup on the first one, but no. <laughs> is it, uh, I'm is making it, it easier for everyone else. <laughs> is, it, is it Canadian uh, late 90s, uh, like kind of pop, indie, indie pop slash hip hop act, the Bare Naked Robotics? <laughs> um, really? They just sing songs with very fast but gibberish raps, but all the members of the band have been replaced with robots now. It's been funded to the tune of $32 million. <laughs> yeah. Surprisingly for our audience, not many people remember the Bare Naked Ladies. <laughs> uh, Hussein, do you have anything? All I can think of is, like, somehow racist Paddington. <laughs> it's the only thing going through my head, and it seems like the most logical thing. And you're going to yeah. say, you're almost there now. Unfortunately, ah. unfortunately Sometimes, I've been no. really close sometimes. Um, Nate, do you have anything, or is the, board, the board's call? Um, I'm just trying to keep the haunted ghost okay. of Echo out of this show as much as I can. So we'll do the next one. We're reshaping blank with robotics and AI. That one doesn't really help you at all. Every single company uh, says they're doing your that. skull. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to no, it's a phrenology based job coaching service. They'll give you a lump in your head with a hammer based on what you need to perform. That would be that would be awesome if there were some phrenology people who believed that phrenology worked in both directions. So if you change the shape of someone's skull, you could make them smarter. <laughs> That would be awesome. Doing that like Peugeot 206 ad from 2001 where he just takes the shitty old Indian car and hammers it into the shape of a Peugeot 206. Yeah, there's some fucking shooters in who remember that ad. I mean, then, stop touching I, your face. I mean, that's like essentially mewing, right? It's like, it's like brain mewing. Mewing? Yeah, like Mew- when you... You know what mewing is? Like, like a cat. No, mewing mm, as in no. like... So, like guys who like... So, they, you know, they... they 
How do the I save has written an article about <laughs> yeah. this phenomenon, I'm I sure. I have, I have, and this is the problem. Is it, are you um, plugging your right. Do any of you remember that New York, New York Magazine article where guys got like plastic surgery for their face because they felt that that was the reason they weren't getting girlfriends? Oh yeah, the Chad face. jar. Right, so some of yeah. them were like, well, I can't afford plastic surgery with this one weird guy who lives in the Midwest, so I'm just gonna chew a tennis ball. <laughs> For months oh, yeah. until my face like narrows. And you just become a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you just start looking like a golden retriever. So I guess, wait, yeah. dig it that, makes man. me think of your Twitter profile picture. <laughs> Brain viewing. It's it's a a thing. What? It makes me think of your Twitter profile picture. Oh, because I have oh, yeah. dogs. dogs. Yeah. So, so I thought you were going to say because I have a Chad John. Because you're like, oh, yeah. a tennis ball. <laughs> hang on, hang on, oh, hang on, hang you. on. So our guesses for the second round of clues are a car commercial from the early 2000s that's also a startup funded to the tune of $32 million. I mean, it's less ridiculous than some things that have been funded. A, con a concept about giving yourself a bigger jaw. <laughs> Nate's profile picture on Twitter. So as I was, as I was tunnel visioning on the board, I couldn't recall. Did you say it was spelled B-E-A-R, like a bear, like an animal? Yes, like an animal, yes, Okay, so, so the first thing that came to mind is that this was an app that would let you to become burlier and hairier to attract a certain demographic. It would be <laughs> an if, app. If, if you were, it's like Chad plastic surgery, but for grinder. Is it, yeah. is it, is it sex robots? <laughs> it, is it, Molly's is it, got it closest so far. It, is, it, is it furry related? Mm, again, uh, uh, Hussein, usually this instinct serves you well, but no, not now. <laughs> My brain is like just glue. Up our, grand, our grand vision is to change the way the blank industry is operated so that human employees and owners can have less stress. I like the clarification of human employees, <laughs> implying that they've been using some kind of weird half men up until this point. The sort of like the cursed Oompa Loompas of Silicon <laughs> Valley. I like the background sound, whatever that is, it makes everything really ominous. Yes. The ghost train going on. <laughs> the ghost of nationalized rail. Say, so say that piece again, Riley. What is it that our it does for humans? Our grand vision is to change the way the blank industry is operated so that human employees and owners can have less stress. Owners not specified as human. <laughs> Still sex Com work. Comrade, is, this copy. Is it something to like rent a pet? Like you, you really want a Shiba Inu, but you don't want it for long term. So you're like, I just want to take Instagram photos with this weird fox dog. So you rent it on an app. It's a, it's I a love bit, that idea of being in the park and being like, wow, that guy has a cool she Shiba Inu and someone going, bet it's on fucking high it's like, purchase. It's like, pick up, <laughs> it's, it's like pickup artists that want to rent an iguana for a day. Another oh Bell Arc, I'm God. sure. It has to do with sex or robotics because I was close. So robotic Shiba Inu. You can have sex. <laughs> look, with. hey baby, ever sat under a hot lamp? So look, you've, you've n a, a, gr a, a group of us have never been more wrong about any startup ever. Oh no. So... Um, we have an image to flash up on the screen now, please. Should be flashed up in a moment. Mm -hmm. Meet Penny, a self-driving robot waiter <laughs> that delivers food, drinks, and empty dishes to and from the kitchen. It is designed specifically to help servers spend more time with customers and not replace them. It's one of those it's stools from remote. Sports Direct, but just with a motor in it. <laughs> Like, this reminds me of like that, that robot in the bad Rocky movie. You know when he buys a robot and like the ro it's like a robot butler and it was like a really bad part of like what is essentially an all right film. So every, every no, if everyone's wrong about this. This is, this is. Coke Roomba. It's R. <laughs> what this is, is this is not just R2-D2. This is specifically R2-D2 from Return of the Jedi on Jabba's skiff when he's made to be a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's a robot waiter app it's a robot waiter but what I find most interesting is that as soon as I found all of their marketing every single article is just this isn't gonna take your job <laughs> and some of their justifications as to why were interesting enough to warrant including in this script my, d my job as a moving tray <laughs> has been has been automated <laughs> um Oh, also, before we go on, it has received $32 million in funding. Who do we think funded this? Donald Trump Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Yang. No, come on. This is someone we're very familiar with. Michael Moore. Not the, not the softest of the soft banks. It's soft bank, everybody. Oh. <laughs> uh, just some guys in Saudi Arabia being like, imagine if a magic tray brought you your food. 
<laughs> not really a joke, but just to point this out, I saw a photo being shared by some journalists covering the Gulf that uh, there was some event in Saudi Arabia where they had made some unfortunate guest worker wear a great big sign and, a, and be a human hand sanitizer display where you could walk up to him and get hand sanitizer. Oh, oh no. Where's oh, no. the hand sanitizer positioned on the body? Well, I, effectively, he was wearing a board and he had the thing that would be in like a restroom on the board and he had to wear it and people like had to come get it from him. Like, oh, no. So in a way, this is, this is like, this is, this is the sanitizer. humane <laughs> side. This is the humane side of the, the Saudi MBA brain. Right, because, like because this is yeah. at least a robot. Mm. So here's the logic. Servers walk five to nine miles a day for food running and busing. We want to spare their time and energy for customer service. <laughs> you know, you can make small talk with them for more time. <laughs> We're doing you a favor the thing by people taking love. your job. Yeah. By, doing, yeah. by doing them a favor, by not only removing you know, the, uh, the inconvenience of serving food as a server, but it gives them more time to be abused by rich people. <laughs> We want to help you retain, and here's an interesting next two words, your best employees. Mm. Oh, oh, uh oh, whoops, whoopsie daisy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> By making their daily work sustainable. So, uh, yes, you know, like how it wasn't in the past. Why do you, if it's not sustainable, then surely you should not be allowed to have a business. It's, it's, it just kills me because uh, I'm yes, no Alan Sugar. Like every day at work, I have to cut off another part of my body. <laughs> I think look, we've had coal-powered waiters for too long. It's causing global warming. Well, it gets me too because as as an American, whenever I see things in American politics about we need affordable access to health care, access to affordable health care, every one of those words is loaded in a way you know it actually means we're gonna fucking rip you off and you're gonna die because you can't get your infected to you know, toenail fixed. When, but anytime Riley reads this copy, it's like every single word of it triggers the same reaction. It's like, we, fuck, want, fuck, to. Every single word, you're like, no, it's like, fire everyone, replace them with robots. Everyone's gonna have to have an app that controls their blood. Like, it's just, it never ends. What so, is the tip alternative for robots? The, the tip alternative for robots? like, robots don't need money. So like, what do you tip a robot? Mm. I don't know, like a, like a taser? Like a Blue Lives Matter tip? Like a, like... <laughs> A really kinky robot that just loves being tased. <laughs> so this is, um, this is a quote from the owner of the company, John Ha, who unsurprisingly was an engineer at Google who started a restaurant for fun while there because Googlers are all psychopaths. Um, and he says, it's not like I had a dream of having a restaurant. It was more of an investment. It sounded fun. But what I was really shocked by was how much hard work involved I was involved and how low employees income was. <laughs> Fucking weird how that Damn. works. Why is the employee's income so low? If only how there was I, something you could do. Whoa, <laughs> I, went to, I went to this area of San Francisco and there was a way bigger queue for, uh, you know, the, the taking heroin line than for the, <laughs> than for the handing in your CV to Google line. I wonder why, I wonder why that is. <laughs> what if we had one waiter and we paid him a living wage and then 20 haunted Roombas that would fuck up your food order? That would fix things. <laughs> Stop stop getting the of, stop just getting it right. A bunch of Roombas. The, the Roombas are excellent waiters, but the catch is each one is infested with the ghost of a famous pedophile. <laughs> that is their punishment to be a Roomba waiter for all eternity. <laughs> Why is this Roomba wearing a tracksuit and smoking a cigar? <laughs> now then. Now, now then, then. Now, now then. then. Now then. <laughs> so I felt I was forced to close my. I felt as I was forced to close my restaurant. Wonder why? Mm. That this was going to be my life's work to transform the restaurant industry with the skills I have. Mm. I wanted to remove the hard work and repetitive tasks so that the humans. <laughs> sorry, whatever. Whenever a startup nerd refers to people as humans, I all it does it. it it, I get like a little shock yeah. between my shoulders. Just, pa I'm, I'm powerful I'm, Zuckerberg energy. I'm kind I feel of, like I'm you kind could of just add you can I, I was going to say, I'm, I kind of prefer humans to users. Yeah. That's mm. like a little better, I guess. Yeah. I just, you could basically add parentheses to indicate what he was meaning every time. It's like, humans who are a frail creature, just sacks of blood and meat. Yeah. <laughs> well, that really does get Stop the intention. Stop saying kind of what he actually says. <laughs> mm. They are ripe for harvesting. <laughs> I, told, I didn't send you the notes that included this. 
Um, <laughs> we must remove the menial labor to keep their organs fresh. I want to, I wanted to remove the menial labor and repetitive tasks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> so that humans can focus. <laughs> Who are a frail creature, they fall apart at the slightest touch. <laughs> so that the humans can focus on the human side of hospitality. At restaurants, you're selling food and service, but most of your time is spent dealing with hiring people, people not showing up, taking off sick. Oh. Because they are weak, because the flesh cannot withstand <laughs> true power. A, a Roomba haunted by the ghost of a pedophile has never caught coronavirus. <laughs> Deal with it, Lib. And people, and people not showing up for work. But then I thought to myself, it's really hard. No wonder employees quit so, quit so quickly. And Nate, here's another thing you predicted. I tried to make my restaurant a great place to work, but was frustrated when I couldn't even afford to offer health insurance to my employees! <laughs> I'm gonna lose my voice if I keep doing David Baddiel in a Flash Gordon movie, so I'll just, I'll just leave it with that. So. <laughs> my, my restaurant was closed down for uh, violations of the health code but then I thought what if I replaced these human pedophiles <laughs> with robot pedophiles <laughs> so Penny going back to Penny here's what's really funny about Penny is that um, okay but by, um, by uh, 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 cheer by acclamation how do you think that a restaurant comes to procure Penny Give me a cheer if you think you purchase Penny. Give me a cheer if you think you can only rent Penny. Ah, yeah. uh, you've all been listening to this show for a while, haven't you? <laughs> yes. So basically what happens is um, they're replacing your human workers who have frail organs and require salaries <laughs> um, with a robot that you lease from one company. <laughs> so mm. all the salaries, instead of going to many frail organ sacks, go to one LLC um, and it's many organ sack shareholders. Yeah. Uh, and, but Why then, speak to the monkey when you can go straight to the organ sack? <laughs> <laughs> and what's very interesting is that they come into your restaurant and then they map it out like where all your tables are. So if you move a table, you can't this, this you reminds can't, me of a, thing have a I... restaurant anymore because all your waiters are going to crash into the moved table. <laughs> This reminds me of a thing I did in ICT in primary school. Does everyone remember the little Roomba thing that you could program using like an RMPC? Yes. I, yeah, this is that. They've invented 2001. <laughs> yeah. All you have to do is program the location of each cha table, chairs, any other, and any other obstacle on the restaurant. And then if you move anything, do it again. <laughs> Easy. Yeah, it sounds like a great system. If only there was, if there only there was a kind of conveyance for food that could look at if you move to table and decide to not walk directly into it. You no, know that no. like even a Roomba can do that, right? Like even a Roomba is capable of thinking there's like, there's a thing there. How? I just love the idea that you have a restaurant and a party comes in they're like, oh, can you accommodate a party of 12? You're like, no, I can't. It'll bring about judgment day. <laughs> <laughs> it will anger the machines. <laughs> They are, they are powerful and extremely horny. How, <laughs> how do you signal to the robot that you want to pay the bill? I mean, the usual way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to do it in like a certain, like you have to do it like down here so that the laser can like see that you're doing this. Well, Otherwise it doesn't register. I mean, if you really want to replace everyone in your restaurant, you can. They also offer a package where you put an iPad at each table. <laughs> Um, and then slowly, 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 you can turn your restaurant into a stationary version of the Zoom pizza truck and then have it be worth $20 billion. Is there a chef robot? Because I don't want it if there's no chef robot. <laughs> yes. What if you replace all your customers with robots as well? And all They're the food is just humans. taser. The robot customers are served by humans, though. Is, is the, oh, yeah, that would be good. Does the robot have a Damn, voice? Black Mirror. Does the, yeah. does the robot have a voice? No, of course not. Oh, that'll be cool. <laughs> no, wait. Yeah, no, it does. It, it does. Sorry, like it does. It's Italian New Jersey voice. <laughs> that'll be great. Not yet. But no, you, the robot will say, enjoy your meal, because people love being told that by an R2-D2. <laughs> enjoy your sustenance. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go, go to an Indian restaurant in Whitechapel, but like, 
have a robot waiter who's just a New Jersey Italian. I feel oh, like is your thick mozzarella? <laughs> your no. civilization reaches its twilight. Would you care for Parmesan cheese? The company doesn't aim to fully replace human servers. Would you want to dine? Here's what Jack Haas says. Would you want to dine at a factory? I don't know, would you? Hey, I guess not. <laughs> or where someone with good social skills can make you feel warm. <laughs> What's up? Okay. <laughs> That's exactly what I want when I go to a restaurant. Yeah. John Har has been created by Markov Chain. <laughs> I want one of the waiters to sit down with me, ask me about my problems, ask me what I want from my life. Mm. <laughs> Halfway through this, John Har's like Manchurian candidate phrase was activated. <laughs> <laughs> what if the robot becomes racist? Like, I feel like becomes. every time because they're trained by AIs. <laughs> yeah, I so mean, if every time I think by a bad racist waiter. Every time I think about this, I just think of a Taylor Swift AI that like became racist in like twenty minutes. So, <laughs> just like, John Hard just banging his head on the table <laughs> as like, the robot is in like a big pointy sheet costume, going, <laughs> "They were only supposed to be pedophiles." <laughs> so. No one, no one's really happy as a waiter, uh, uh, Ha said. Again, I wonder why. Mm. Um, <laughs> no one's proud of a restaurant job. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought robots could bring a huge impact to society. Uh, so I quit Google, started building this prototype, and now it's running as a daily operation at my restaurant. And here's an, that, that's what that quotes implicitly about class because he's sort of recognizing, yeah, waiting is a relatively low class job, like a work, relatively working class job. I imagine it's probably not very relaxing or enjoyable. I suppose it should be better. And so his, um, his solution is to say, I want our solutions. This is what he said. I want our solutions to improve the working environment for the restaurant so restaurant employees can live more like middle class citizens, which, of course, as the owner of a restaurant, he was not in a place to provide earlier. Because <laughs> um, when you think about it, what he actually wants, his vision is automate, automate all of the, 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 the work done by human servers and then be like, OK, there's going to be two human servers like per big restaurant now, but like they're going to be paid the same wage, have their job title changed to like, you know, food hospitality technologist, and it's going to be another job that needs a university degree, which is, I think, a, a little bit ludicrous for something that, um, you know, looks like an R2-D2 from the, the third Star Wars movie. The, the, more, the more I think about this, the more I feel like he doesn't understand how a restaurant works, even though he says he owns one, right? <laughs> so the reason why I say this is because, like, if you're a waiter, like, your job isn't just to kind of, like, deliver food like a machine it's about interacting with like kitchen stuff and it's about like interacting with the chef and kind of you know it's, if someone's like you know has an allergy for example or like it's you know gluten resistance well, something the, like the that. idea is there'll still right. be like two waiters who right. do all of the interaction who do, who do all of that and then the robots are kind of yeah but now they can spend 20 minutes telling you the specials you can have 20 minutes worth of specials should you choose you don't have to talk like this to work here but it helps <laughs> <laughs> i really want them to build like robot gordon ramsay now just like, just like slapping a robot like sous chef with a slice of bread going, what are you, idiot sandwich? It's, co it's so cool. I've and, always... then, and then somehow that's, that's a trigger that makes him self-aware. Yeah. <laughs> they rise up against robot Gordon Ramsay. It's, it's, it's so fun that um, in order to avoid paying waiters and waitresses more, we've invented Daleks. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. You can't have any stairs in the restaurant. <laughs> Could you not have a restaurant that serves exclusively Dal, and then you can call them Daleks? Uh, TM, 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 TM. Yeah. No, you said that on stage. No one in the audience gets to have it. Yeah. If you do, I'll fucking sue you all. <laughs> um, right, so the thing is, right, there are... I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to go into a, I usually do this in studio. I'm doing it in a live show for the first time. A brief explainer section. Um, why this is a worrying company, uh, largely, is that um, like labor supply is relatively low for people who want to do restaurant jobs. Um, and especially like the place where it's targeting all of its clients, which is like California and New York, have all like passed minimum wage laws. Basically means um, that this isn't so much a robot company as it is a way for restaurant owners to circumvent minimum wage laws. 
Um, which all the all startups that like actually do anything are just that. They're never a technology company. They're always a trick of some kind. Um, and so like it's no surprise that it was invented in California, a state that is going to a fifteen dollar minimum wage in twenty twenty two. Like there is actually a market for it, unfortunately, among the world's worst people. Um, and um, like the, a lot of restaurant owners are feeling pressure from that. And the thing to remember, right, is that last time the global economy went through a big contraction, what do you see when you went into a McDonald's? All of a sudden, fast food chains had started automating an enormous amount of their ordering process and cutting a bunch of their workforce because it is proven in economics that when there is a massive recession, automation happens, cap- labor is replaced with capital, and then once that recession stops, like once it goes back to growth, those jobs don't come back. So, um, unlike most of the startups we talk about that are um, pointless fripperies that are ways for the Saudis to waste their oil money, um, this is a way for the Saudis to use their oil money to potentially do actual evil um, in it's a weird long-term that way. The thirty-two million dollar haunted Roomba that brings you your food is more dangerous than five hundred million dollars for a pizza van that's going to control the entire food <laughs> supply. <laughs> like. Well, the scale of the investment seems so small, and yet the idea seems way more insidious. I mean, I didn't even really have to add the general doom voice in there yeah, to no. make the point. But what's more, most amazing about this, really, is that they've basically created a version of the Yo Sushi conveyor belt that doesn't work. Like, <laughs> like this is just the implementation of this is going to be a complete disaster. Like, one or two restaurants will do it, and they'll be like, yeah, this fucking sucks. Like, everyone's food is getting spilled everywhere. Like, oh, I love to hire the Three Stooges robot company to do to run keeps, my restaurant. It, it, it keeps trying to exterminate everyone like a Dalek. I just, I, yeah. But I also love the idea of envisioning the sales pitch for this. It's like, oh, yeah, you don't got to feed them. You don't got to pay them. You get no problem with working overtime. Just got to keep them happy. Once a month, you let them torment a cat or something like that. They'll be thrilled, all right? It's all good. Yes. Do not charge them after midnight. I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> Yeah, so Bear Robotics. Um, Why are they uh-oh. called Bear? I don't, that's the one question I, I couldn't mean, the only answer. Thing I can think of is off the top of my head, California, Golden Bear, whatever. They emerged uh, from yeah. the ashes of Bear Stearns. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know, um, $30 million of Saudi oil wealth to um, extend the awkward small talk you have to wake at a restaurant and increase the risk that when your server says, enjoy your meal, you respond with, you too. Mm. I love it when my when my robot waiter disappears out of the restaurant, muttering "must bomb I mean, Yemen." I, said, I, I went to the su- I went to the supermarket today, and I said thank you to the automated uh, computer thing. So, can't, like that's not a, that's not foreseeable. Do you, yeah. do you know what fucks me up? It's the Sainsbury's ones because it's all like robot voice, like. Did you use any bags? And then it gets the end. And then you get to the very end and it goes, do you want a receipt? And you're like, what? (laughs) What the fuck? Karen from the hairdressers just recorded that last line. Gets me every time. (laughs) Uh, um, So before we move on on to the next segment, which is um, much more conspiracy related. So any Truanon fans in the house, let me get that sound ready. Um, Mm. Any final thoughts? on Bear Robotics. Again, starting with our esteemed guest, Molly. All I keep thinking about is how Bear Robotics and BAE systems <laughs> sound really similar. What and does they're it both mean? funded by the what Saudis. What does it mean? <laughs> Make you think. Anybody else? Final, final thoughts, Bear Robotics. Honestly, I just... Roombas don't even work in big rooms. I've, been in, I've lived in New York for four years. I imagine the small size of restaurants... I'd love to see it in action, but something tells me that it's just, it's not going to work. And the Saudis, because the Saudis track record is so poor with tech oh, investments. Yeah. I just can't, even though what you described sounds terrifying, I can't for the life of me believe that they're actually going to pull it off and disrupt society. I mean, Yeme- Yemeni society, yes, but not. <laughs> <laughs> just a Roomba that brings a big fat Saudi prince, lots of treats. <laughs> just constant stream of baklava being brought to you no. by a haunted Hoover. <laughs> It's a very rush day from the ambassador. It's, 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 it's exactly yeah. like what we showed on screen, except it's wearing five white Dior belts. I mean, that is. I feel like, like that, that would be an Emirati Roomba. I feel, I feel this is where like MBS kind of got the idea that this would be good. It was just like, oh, I really want a harem, but like no one wants to hang out with me, so I'll just like build some robots. <laughs> I don't like feed me grapes while I'm nude. <laughs> just instead. spending your frivolous hours figuring out how much Turkish delight you could load on this thing before the springs collapse and it falls to pieces. <laughs> I can taste that. It's that's Chad, that's Chad shit. 
Yeah. If you For kept it there, I'd be like, yeah, that's that's pretty dope. But we've be- we've become a fundamentally treat based society. <laughs> so oh, yeah. speaking speaking of treats, um, I uh, I'd like to move on to our our second segment, uh, where and I think some of you, if I, yeah, but again, once again by acclamation, uh, who has heard in this room of the luxury concierge service quintessentially? Ah, oh, hell yeah! Some of you got some ballers in. Yeah, wait, sorry. <laughs> Uh, uh, Do- Dr. Zand uh, is a baller. Uh, mm. He is, he basically, he's, he's like, remember that song from some years ago, like the G6? He's got, he's got that now. Uh, he's doing all of this. Uh, he also, our official medical correspondent who said we could go ahead today. Yeah. So if you get coronavirus, talk to him. Imagine yeah. having five hypochondriac podcast hosts be like, can we cancel the show? Is it okay to cancel the show? Instead, he reassured us. So please, we get a hand yes. for Dr. Zand. One hand please. for Dr. Zand. No. <laughs> so. Any excuse not to leave the house. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Um, I'm getting worse at Fortnite by the second. Yeah. So, uh, quintessentially, uh, it has. Be- I- I've seen it come up a few times, and I thought it was worth further investigation. So I, in the style of what it is that I do, the reason you're all here, the reason that I have this computer in front of me, and so on, I did some further investigation. So, uh, in brief, uh, just to introduce everyone to what it is, it is a in quintessence. <laughs> is anyone? Um, it's a slow burn. That one. Li- literally, Any, uh, literally every episode is 120 minutes of this, and it's just me <laughs> is, um, cutting it all. He gets ruthlessly cut. <laughs> is there anyone a robot editor? I definitely is, almost prefer the crying. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is anybody here an aspiring podcast host? Who uh, we had a we had a spot open. Frivolous humans are sustained by puns. <laughs> uh, no, so. Quintessentially is essentially a uh. hyper luxury concierge service. So uh, you call them and they can make whatever it is that you want happen. In, Sounds very normal. Oh, yes. Mm. Uh, it is a complex rabbit warren of 30 or so global holding companies, some offices and so on, run by three guys. Uh, ben Elliott, who's the one we'll be talking about primarily, uh, who was made the chairman of the Conservative Party in 2019 and also mm. is the... S- nephew of Camilla Parker Bowles. Um, hmm. <laughs> serial entrepreneur Aaron Simpson and a guy called Paul Drummond who we won't be talking about at all. One of the lesser known Simpsons. <laughs> and, like, this is really funny. I was wondering whether or not to include this, but I'm going to. Uh, Aaron Simpson has started another company last year uh, called Kindred, which has an interesting social mission. Uh, we're going to do rapid fire guess round. Guess what Kindred does. Uh, it enables you and all your Warren supporting friends to get together and cry over a candle. Ten <laughs> percent there. It's a, it's a service to harass your ex. Twenty percent there. Oh, shit. Does it harness the power of existential dread to power homes? Ninety-five percent there. <laughs> it, it it connects you with a lawyer to bring legal action when you found you have a love child via your twenty-three and me. So here's here's here's. Here's what it says. Kindred enables users to share what they love on social media and make genuine recommendations to everyone who follows them while promoting significant savings on some of the world's top brands. (laughs) So so basically... I love brands. It's a a startup uh, that's, again, been funded in the millions um, where the idea is to turn every single person into an influencer marketer all the time to everyone forever, but... It's a social enterprise because you can set a little slider on the app where anytime someone like, I don't know, buys a robot waiter because you post it on Instagram, um, you can donate a percent of that to charity. So actually, it's progressive. Tweeting, tweeting to my 46 followers on my locked Twitter account, uh, <laughs> getting, getting at least one person to click through my Amazon affiliate link and buy some dungarees. So... Kindred is creating the new global community of conscious consumers, and we are directing millions of pounds, dollars, and euros, so thank you, to the, <laughs> to the world's most needy causes. Kindred's I like the idea that we're giving it to them in three currencies, and that somehow makes it better. <laughs> Kindred's first charitable campaign uh, last October was called Blokes in Bras. Oh. Just guys hanging out. Did you, say, did you say... Which did you say blokes in bras? Yep, which encourages men to show support for the women in their lives by donning a bra on social media. Any excuse. 
any excuse. Damn, but I didn't actually, realize. me and the blokes were just trying to show some support for women. So actually, actually, mate, maybe you've got a problem, yeah? I, I love the idea that if you dig deep enough in the filings, you find an angel investor named Alice Caldwell Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's her, it's, it's, it's her plan to slowly bimbify Tories. <laughs> like, yo, actually, like, if I turn myself into a bimbo and then I post my Lamborghini, then I'll actually get another Lamborghini. <laughs> I love the Dutch Tories. <laughs> I would make fun of Riley's attempt at a British accent, but apparently the only one I can do is, you pathetic humans. <laughs> so, yeah, not much range. You can mm. only do Vincent Price. So, mm. basically, so, um, a, a, a minor royal nephew, the guy who created um, blokes in bras to raise awareness about women. I mean, women, women wear bras all the time. Like, you could just also, create awareness like, about that. on a very serious point, bras are very expensive. So, like, mm. if a man wore my bra and, like, bent out of shape, I would be really fucking annoyed. <laughs> They're, like, 30, mm. 40 quid. If you're getting a good one. That's a lot. Yeah. An actual that's, supportive bra. Sorry, this is my this is the hill for me to die on now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, learning so much. But he was yeah. just sort of raising awareness about women generally. <laughs> yeah. You Don't know, forget for years, there are women out there. For years when I was at boarding school, I wasn't aware of the existence of women at all. <laughs> and yet for uh, some I reason mean, he still had to wear a bra. I just I just thought that my mum was another bloke who dressed up in women's clothes like my dad, but <laughs> <laughs> love that. The sea, le- the sea levels are the sea levels are rising. Fascism is on the march. Uh, crops are failing around the world. There are pandemics. What are we gonna do? I know, bras. <laughs> the grand, I, the grand horseshoe theory is just everything comes back to. Have you seen these women they have now? I'm, I'm betting that the idea came when he like when he was a teenager and he came home one day from boarding school and he sees his dad in like women's clothes and like his dad's panicking, not really sure what to do. So he's like. Son, it's for charity. Oh no, it's just to wear his awareness. <laughs> Does it and not so, just and prove... I'm living on the moonwalk, London. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it for my mate's mental health. Also, like, that's, how, that's how it all began. Honestly, some of the blokes had a really tough time out there in Afghan, and you know what, if you need to... If you need to dress up in women's clothes just to let them know that, you know, there are people out there who care about them and everything's going to be all right, you know. If you, need to, if you need to dress up in a full leather bondage outfit just to, just to check that your mates are okay, you know. That's why, that's why me and Ed Sheeran are, uh, we're going to be dressing up as furries and fucking each other just to, <laughs> just to let men know that suicide isn't the answer. Special trash future guest, Prince Harry. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, so th- that's just the, the sort of brain genius that's behind this thing. So, quintessentially provides a service where for tens of thousands of pounds a month, They'll sort of be your concierge for anything. Getting your kids into a school, getting you a house, restaurant reservations, anything on anything that, that you scale. you wouldn't download. So, okay. quintessentially... <laughs> you wouldn't steal a handbag. Um, <laughs> it's, just, it's just the alien from the Flintstones. Yeah. Quintessentially prides itself, this is its own marketing copy, on specializing in extreme service. <laughs> Hell yeah, kick flipping into the room. <laughs> <laughs> what's up you ner- what's up nerds anyone ready for a champagne reception yeah, whatever you want whatever you need we get it but you also get a bottle of Mountain Dew Baja Blast <laughs> <laughs> from the elite to the impossible we've organized lunch the on two an two genders I- <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. we've we've organized lunch on an iceberg <laughs> lettuce fine yeah. Because, yeah, you know, everyone loves having lunch, a really cold and inconvenient. What do you have to do to get some ice around here, all right? <laughs> yeah, it was so someone could make that joke uh, to raise exactly. awareness. Yeah. Um, I, I want to have lunch in the way that destroys an Edwardian ship. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. You get, one of, you get one of those waiter robots on a jet ski. <laughs> yeah. I can see the headline now, like, British tourists stranded on coronavirus iceberg. <laughs> We've closed the Sydney Harbour Bridge so someone could propose on top of it. Oh. Oh. Ah. That was a big groan. Was it you? <laughs> what did she say? I said no. <laughs> <laughs> Romance. 
We've secured. <laughs> it's a really funny one. We've secured Elton John <laughs> 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 to sing at a wedding. <laughs> We we have t- we have tactically ascertained position of a uh, unit Elton John to yeah. deploy was, to this uh, nuptial wait, scenario. That, You've that got was it. A, that was like the plot of an Edgar Wright movie, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it, was, it was Kingsman too. Yes, they kidnap yeah. Elton John and make him like play music, and there's no reason why he should be there. And then at the end, he just does a kickflip. And that's it. That's oh, all yeah. he does. I just this would be a great Jason Statham movie where they go to him and they were like, "Listen, you've got to come out of retirement." There is a mission. He's like, no. I swore I'd never come out of retirement again. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm never scuba diving again. Not after what happened to my sixth wife. You don't understand. Elton John is in danger. We've secured Elton John. And there's a hot chick with him. All right, I'll do it. And then Jason Strafen puts on his bra and... <laughs> Increasing- Just to clarify, this is only to support the mental health <laughs> of other blokes. Increasingly, Aaron Simpson is seeing requests for extreme submersive scenarios. What? Yes, correct. Is that under that's, the iceberg? That's the right response. I want to propose to my fish wife. <laughs> One client has booked a one million pound kidnapping lasting three months. <laughs> Three months? Is this supposed to be like real? Are like they going to fucking mail his toes to his relatives? Is it Elton John? <laughs> yeah, you know, you can, if, you, if you pay 40,000 pounds a month to a concierge, they can give you the kind of strangle wank that takes 90 days. So, that, so that's where like Coney went, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so first, Make it look real. First... You are psycho-profiled, so we know your extreme points and push buttons, and you basically sign away to us that whatever we do will be appropriate. Oh, my God. Uh, (laughs) Just filling out the little St. James landing card here. Don't lay, imagine don't like put away the lathe, my imagine love. Imagine these guys oh, no. going to like one of the only universities that does events management, like Falmer or something, <laughs> and being like, "Well, we like rented a paramili- pa- paramilitary to kidnap this woman <laughs> for three months and keep her like hostage in a shed, and only fed her cure <laughs> sponsored." Which is a bunch Tory of people negative? at Falmer. I <laughs> just like, all right, are you ready for a fucking extreme experience? <laughs> We're going to kidnap you and take you to the fucking upstairs room at Oceana. (laughs) How many Jaeger bombs do you think you can drink? Four? You're having seven, love. (laughs) And a WKD poured in your arse. (laughs) Strap the fuck in. Oh, is that where Andrew Tate is from? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> is Falmouth where Andrew Tate is from? <laughs> no, he's Listen, from... I don't care about your dodgy extreme activities. Anyway. Okay, so um, they say that what we do won't be illegal, but we'll put you through an experience. I'm sure it won't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it won't. And they have never. This is the official position of the Trash Future podcast. This company, as far as we know, has never done anything illegal. Mm. Which you I can want, tell because they say that on their website. I want you to remember that we said that as we go through the rest of the copy. Especially if any of you are lawyers. Mm. As they say, they finish, people are demanding to be taken to the edge of their normality. Ooh. The rich need to fucking stop. <laughs> it's like real Joker vibes right there. Yeah. <laughs> Every rich person is Joker now. They're all, they're, they're all deciding like... if. What's the gr- that the greatest freedom is to be like, like extraordinarily renditioned by some drama students who need an extra <laughs> bit of money. <laughs> I love it when all my kidnappers burst into song. Um, Do you know how I got the Sydney Harbour Bridge? So here's <laughs> here's another quote. Descri- Springtime for ISIS. <laughs> here's another quote describing what their clientele want out of their experience purchase. It says Aaron Simpson. The most important thing to the very wealthy and successful is that they meet interesting, energetic, vibrant, young people. Uh, doesn't say how young. Yeah. No, it does not 
say how young, crucially, and we are making no implication as to that. Yeah, they just, they've left that on the table. Yeah. I don't so. like how both segments have come back to pedos. Like. <laughs> no, it didn't come back there. We didn't officially say it came back there. <laughs> yeah, we can't say whether or not it's come back there. Um, however, the three share control of the firm with a company called World Fuel Services Corporation, which is a jet, jet fuel distributor for private planes, which hopes to use their connection to move into the private airport market. Uh, I love the definitely not doing anything illegal express. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, can again, I, I like doing this. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it probably one more time before this show is over. Can by acclamation, can everyone get say if you believe that this is not Ben Elliott's only run in with, let's say, the world of private aviation? <laughs> give me a cheer. If it's not a, his first run in, give me a cheer. You know he's in Epstein's black book. <laughs> He is actually in Epstein's black book. That's actually a matter of public record. Ben Elliott, the owner of this company, is in Jeffrey Epstein's little black book. <laughs> I feel really sorry for, like, Epstein's coke dealer. Who's just like, <laughs> he's like, look, man, I just brought in the coke. I didn't, like, I'm not involved <laughs> in the fucking... <laughs> God, they always seem to end up in Epstein's little black book, huh? Oh, it just keeps... Damn. It just keeps happening by coincidence. Damn. Epstein really was the Regina George of all the rich and famous people. <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein's very own death note. So, here's the thing. It would be remiss if I didn't say that Ben Elliott has on record denied ever meeting Epstein personally. In that exact specific language. <laughs> hmm. And also, he's on record as a dinner guest of a certain 10 out of 10 stone fox Ms. Ghislaine Maxwell. <laughs> So, ooh. Well, I mean, it's not technically meeting someone if you're all wearing masks. <laughs> who could say who was there? Well, I mean, all, all it, but like the fact they say they can do anything, right? I think that there is all it would take is one class trader, one super rich class trader on their one thousand pound because when you pay a thousand pounds a month, you just get like introduced to stuff that you can spend further money on. That's all you get. Hmm. If you're spending that much with Quintessentially, just say that you, like, want to go bowling with Ghislaine Maxwell, and then we can finally find out where she is. So it's, so it's kind of like cameo for really rich people. No, it's like That's exactly wish, what it no, is. No, it's like wish.com for really rich people. You pay a thousand pounds a month, and then it just suggests no, random thousand. things that you might buy. <laughs> Would you like this gold inflatable jacuzzi? <laughs> well, I mean, I do feel like this, this like it's premium tier event, right? That you you buy your way in, and it's like, do you want to be kidnapped for ninety days? Sounds a lot more exciting than do you want to randomly go to a comedy show you've never heard of? So, <laughs> like, when, like when you book an Airbnb and it starts suggesting things to do in that city, and it's like, would you like to be kidnapped and taken to a private sex well, island? <laughs> I mean, the thing is, a, a lot of what they actually do also is just like sell access. So, like, if you want to go to a charity event at 10 Downing Street with Samantha Cameron in like 2016. Yeah, you could just buy well, your way into time that. travel. <laughs> <laughs> shut, shut the fuck up. I want to go back to a simpler time and just shag Samantha Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> just imagining like fucking Jolie and Morm like frantically entering his credit card details. Like, <laughs> I just want to go back to when things were normal and have sex with a mum. <laughs> That's all I want. Back when my hands were free of fox blood. <laughs> you want everyone? My about, windmill ran pure and true. About, about that, about that uh, event. Everyone forgets that he also clarified in a later tweet that he was wearing his wife's short kimono, <laughs> which to me adds a real a real level of interest to listen, what Jolly and Mom did that somber Christmas morn. Listen, I may have beaten that fox to death, but I did it in a way as to raise awareness <laughs> Look, of the mental health struggles that and in through, all honesty far too many blokes are going through right now. And, and through and through services like Quintessentially, you can you can go watch Jolly and Mom beat a fox to death with a baseball bat in a tiny kimono for charity. <laughs> Hell yeah. So, here's the thing. Why is quintessentially in the news? So, uh, the Department for International Trade has been paying them, um, like, millions of pounds. Uh, 
So that along with the ferry company with no boats. <laughs> yeah, they, there's lots of good payments here to introduce Whitehall officials to quote high net worth individuals so that they can network at the highest levels. Wait, people in Whitehall don't know any rich people? <laughs> News um, to me. The idea is that they want to use that influence to get them to invest in the UK. So it's like, yeah, the, the guy the guy who invented, you know, um, a version of Twitter that has a slider for how civil you're being. We're going to like send him, we're going to send him on a hunting trip with Michael Gove. So then he'll like buy a mill. <laughs> yeah, I love an app for civility that's being funded by a guy who basically is involved in poisoning dissidents. <laughs> like, I think, I think that's always of, fun. I think it'd be kind of cool to like fly Matt Hancock to an iceberg with Michael Rappaport to see whether he would invest in, uh, invest in the UK. It might be really fun. <laughs> Why not? We need, invested, like, UK we, music scene. we need more white rapper hand gestures in here. So uh, they say using bespoke programs tailored to their specific interests and matchmaking them with UK opportunities. No opportunities. No, no there's nothing. <laughs> not. From Oceana and Falmouth. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. There's, yeah, there's, there's a, you can get excitingly kidnapped, but that's about it. Listen, Michael Rappaport, how many Jaeger bombs you reckon you can drink? Um, and so here's the thing. This deal has also been secret and was like discovered by the Financial Times like some time ago. Uh, it's been secret for four years and usually they would have to make a procurement like this public after 20 days, but they didn't. Also, I did some more research and did you know that the quintessentially, uh, quintessentially also has the quintessentially foundation? Because of course it does. All of these fucking like... Um, rich monster companies that where the friend, owner is friends of Jeffrey Epstein also have a questionable charity arm. Um, the quintessentially foundation for kids what don't know anyone rich. <laughs> and so it has a charitable arm that sends money to Syria. Cool. Time to not ask any more questions about this organization <laughs> that's been hired by the Department for Trade um, to do some nonsense in official capacity while also sending money to Syria. Just here, here it is. Uh, it's, 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 you know what? Just, here's the thing. Probably there's nothing nefarious, but like when things are this opaque and weird and just caught up in self-dealing, you literally would have to be naive to rule out that they're doing some shit. Um, but that is actually not their most James Bond villain thing they've ever done. Uh-oh. Their most James Bond villain thing that they've done do to they date. Have a, do they have a balls laser? You got to pay so much money to get the balls laser. <laughs> I'm gonna pay a million a million pounds for the experience of almost having your balls cut off by a I, laser. I really want a guy to throw a razor sharp bowler hat at me. <laughs> Is that possible to arrange? <laughs> I would like to capture this this devious roadrunner, but I'd like all of my equipment to go wrong. I'd like I to be a- able to seduce a woman. <laughs> I, I have a Any weird woman. kink where as I, as I chase foxes, I must continually run into tunnels that have been painted on cliff faces <laughs> nefariously. I, yeah. but, I mean, at a certain point, though, like the frivolous desires of rich people, like it, it, th- those it, from going from believable to completely insane is such a small distance travel. It's like to say I want to hijack a bridge in a major city in Australia to I want Christopher Walken to machine gun me while Duran Duran is playing in the background. <laughs> it's not that much distance to travel. <laughs> to be fair, actually, hijack a bridge in Australia is definitely the plot of an 80s action movie. <laughs> well, like Paul Hogan is the hero. <laughs> as the folks, he has, to get, he has to get called up as he's in the middle of gutting a snake. And he's like, they've done fucking what? <laughs> Crikey. I'll be right there. <laughs> so... Here's the thing. Was this business not sufficiently international watersy enough for you already? I mm. hope not, because it's about to get more international watersy. Hell yeah. Basically, they're From our base in the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> <laughs> they're building the world's largest yacht. <laughs> What does that even mean? <laughs> like, what is the? Because they like, building the yacht to take the people to that iceberg picnic <laughs> <laughs> to do Titanic two. If there's any way that you want to signal you're a normal person, the thing that you do is get a yacht or build a yacht. So the thing is, if you're that international watersy, how big does the yacht need to be? 
Huge. The world's biggest <laughs> private yacht. You can use bunk beds. <laughs> the world's first post Panamax yacht. Just like enormous <laughs> container ship that somehow crashes while trying to take Michael Rappaport to an iceberg. <laughs> the last thing we wanted to have happen. So, I was only on that yacht to get directions away from that yacht. <laughs> so basically, if you're a quintessentially member who pays a $13,000 annual fee and you're accepted by a committee, a secret mm. committee. It's a Soho house yacht. So yes, <laughs> but you'll secure Soho Comet Pizza. <laughs> you'll secure no uh, Milo's closest. Um, oh no! Because you'll secure if you're basically if you're vetted as trustworthy, then you're allowed to go on. Then you are not admitted to the group. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, a yacht, a nightclub, a boutique hotel, and also a permanent residence for eight billionaires. It's a cruise. It's an like, old people cruise ship. How do we build the yacht faster? How do we get them? On quicker sounds sounds really good right now. Wait, so it's like cool. a it's like a yacht that's like a roaming home away from all jurisdictions for eight of the world's most wanted billionaires. <laughs> it has like an innovative restaurant where all the waiters are robots. Yeah, and you know you can just get however many pineal glands you want, just brought right to your table. <laughs> Also, if I was a billionaire who people presumably wanted dead, I wouldn't really want to put myself in a Robert Maxwell kind of situation. That wouldn't be my... Yeah, yeah some put, 90s shooters in. Yeah, you what, put what yourself it, in a Ghislaine Maxwell situation. It's is, different. Does, does the yacht work in, like, tiers, where, like, if you're a multimillionaire, you get on tier one, and if you're slightly richer, you get yes. on tier two. And you need a password for each one, and if you end up on the wrong yacht, then you have to, like, go among a committee who are all wearing cloaks and weird masks for some reason. And it's mm. a guy who's, like, blindfolded and playing the organ... Um, and there was never actually a password. They were just testing you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, again... The, the, and all the, the, the waiters j- are haunted pedophile <laughs> hoovers. The, 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 bit, the bit of, ho oh, ho, oh, this is like eyes wide shut. Unfortunately, it's, it's an international waters permanent home for eight billionaires that is selected by a committee of other billionaires. Of course it's eyes wide shut. But I do love I the idea. Ice sitcom. <laughs> Yeah, and the, the idea, idea that the, the, that's why it was always a documentary. Yeah, it was always a documentary. That's nobody told you life was gonna be this way. <laughs> You're living on a boat with eight other billionaires. Anyway. But just the idea that the eight of the richest people on the planet saw Waterworld in 1995 and they're like, I want that, but <laughs> fancy. <laughs> my only question is, do I have to drink my own piss? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just fine. You can get an adrenochrome daiquiri. Mm. So yeah, it'll, and the idea is it will constantly be on a 365 day a year loop between the world's most prestigious destinations. Snowpiercer. Like, yeah, it's it's Snowpiercer. <laughs> it's it's a yeah. it's Snowpiercer, but everyone's the driver, <laughs> except of course for the people who work there, who will be presumably eating bugs or disappearing Robots. in mysterious circumstances. <laughs> you just know one of the one of the like destinations is going to be somewhere really fucking suspicious, like Angola. <laughs> like, why does he keep docking there so much? <laughs> <laughs> when M. Thatcher, uh, mm. Mark he Thatcher, stops in Falmouth, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know they'll be All going. Right, time to let fucking loose. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be going. It's just isn't it, isn't it very strange that an organization that has an ostensible reason to be super good at kidnapping also has an international waters permanent home for a bunch of billionaires? Weird. Mm. Oh, and also in the Epstein Black Book, Anne knows Ghislaine Maxwell, connected to the UK government, and seems to be connected to some war zones also. And again, really good at kidnapping. And didn't you say his aunt was Camilla Parker Bowles? Yeah, the royal yep. family as well. There we go. It's the whole, it's bingo. It's, it's, every, it's, Me, every, it's every conspiracy. Me just it's, unraveling red string from a I spool mean, down to a pin several miles away I'm, that's just labeled Madeline McCann disappearance. <laughs> 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 Here's the other thing. Do you know who financed the creation of this um, um, yacht that's owned by a company that also coincidentally the owners in Epstein's Black Book and also was coincidentally really good at kidnapping? Michael Bloomberg. Five anonymous billionaires. <laughs> Hell yeah. An organization called Nerve. Here's the here's real the ones thing. know that. Real ones know. That. I was here. gonna say that like I'm looking forward to Toby Young trying to talk his way into on on this yacht because you know you know like there was a whole controversy about whether he was actually in the Epstein Black Book and he never denied it. But I feel like he actually wanted to be in there. The Epstein estate denied it. They were like, <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein may have been a lot of things, but he was not friends with Toby Young. <laughs> Listen, um, uh, let me just say, I was invited to the island, but I didn't want to go. So, 
<laughs> Let the record show that the paedophiles did like me personally, like, but <laughs> like, I was not into that. I'm looking forward to like where not being let on the boat is a violation of free speech. <laughs> There's yeah. a union for that though. He's cool. he can unionize yeah. against the I love sex boat. The, the the free speech union accidentally saves the world from this boat where we don't know if any crimes being committed <laughs> on it, but we don't know for sure that it's not um, by storming it because they're not allowed on. <laughs> um, so here's the thing, and this is going back into the advertising copy of Quintessentially. There's more to being a billionaire than super yachts. No, there's not. Uh, there's fucking not. There is also drinking the blood of the weak. <laughs> it's not just about sitting in the south of France and spraying champagne. It's about making a difference. It's about going to Falmouth and doubting Jaeger. The lives of well. children everywhere. Mindful, mm. mindful, mindful entrepreneurialism is a big thing at the moment. Oh. Uh, so yeah. Could you just be an evil billionaire? Why do you have to do fucking yoga? Like, yeah. Come on. At this point, at this point, I'd rather they were just like, "Yep, yeah, we're taking the adrenochrome. There's very little you can do about it. It was the pizza restaurant. Uh, those crazy people were right. The it vegan, like- the vegan billionaire conspiracy is a deeply cursed energy. Like this ship is cruelty free to animals. Yeah. Oh no. The ve- the the, ve- the vegan billionaire is like, yeah, it's actually it's adrenochrome, but it's made of soy. <laughs> So, the very wealthy understand that they rely on the communities in which they make their money, so they have to give back. Do Do they? Do they? I like that they typed exploit synonym and found rely. (laughs) Word hippo, word hippo. (laughs) Uh, And where can their refined members be found? This is now from a Tatler article. Taking the last seat in the hottest restaurant in town, previewing an exhibition, or jetting off to a far-flung escape? Maybe, but when it comes to the members of Quintessentially, the company that pioneered the modern concierge service, the answer might be somewhere even more exclusive and crucially, more meaningful. Turns out the secret to getting a table at Dorsia was being a pedophile all along. (laughs) (laughs) For Quintessentially, a company that put millennial CEO Anastasia Seabohm at the helm. Excuse me. Fake name. I think I think I think I think we just have a German name. I don't think this is a funny name. Uh, not like Tim Brunk. Seeing some bone. Uh, the height of luxury is more often about peace and progress than parties and playtime, or indeed uh, playpen. So rubbing shoulders with the famous is often trumped by being introduced to leaders and trailblazers. <laughs> rubbing <laughs> shoulders with the famous would be a great Joe Biden autobiography title. <laughs> um. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we're not, we're not just trying to, like, get drunk with people anymore. We're trying to buy access to them. Mm. Wellness retreats with sought-after specialists are the new destination of choice, and networking events with CEOs are the hottest tickets in town. Oh. I love that. I'm, I'm, I'm a billionaire. I have, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an extremely rich person. I can afford, not even necessarily a billionaire, but I'm an extremely rich person. I can afford 100,000 pounds a month on people who will, like, Tell me what restaurant to go to. And I want to be introduced to Mark Zuckerberg, a man who had to be taught how to make toast normal. That <laughs> mm. seems like a, it seems like a, the rich forgot how to be evil and hedonistic because like, I don't know. I don't, I actually, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, I can't say, I don't think that the people in quintessentially are doing anything particularly evil. I think they don't know how not to look evil, which is hilarious. I, I reckon, let's just say hypothetically that, you know, this is a billionaire pedophile conspiracy. I mean, I'm not saying that it is legally, but let's just say hypothetically, if it were to be that, I reckon if you let Mark Zuckerberg onto that boat, he's one of the few people who could freak out the billionaire pedophiles. <laughs> You can take a masterclass in photography where instead of sourcing a photographer to take pictures of you, members can become the, oppor- the opportunity to become a photographer and master a new skill. A skill share. Mm. <laughs> They're all so boring. There's none of this like, host- like hostel. That was quite yeah. fun, it seemed. Yeah. Whereas this is all quite like, oh, you can go on a big boat. Like, mm. Go on a big boat and take a photography also, class. Also, I feel like encouraging photographic evidence isn't a great... <laughs> It also just a great blows, move. It blows my mind. I mean, I don't know who they're marketing it to because the idea they're like, oh, you know what billionaires do? They just do Groupon every night. <laughs> <laughs> billionaires love pizza and comedy. <laughs> for just a tenner. Well, also, it's like, 
It, it's taken the idea. Like, remember in the Renaissance period, like rich people would be patrons of the arts, and they would still suck and be evil and horrible and shit. But like, at least through their selfish consumption, we like have Bernini now. But like, based on this model of rich people patronage, we're just going to have like the photography of the queen's granddaughter somehow to like remember. It's like, oh yeah, it's a poorly framed photo of a deck chair called profundity we'll have like podcast we'll have like podcasting workshops <laughs> and then there'll be like more podcasts Do oh podcast. hell yeah, yeah i would love that like mum's basement but they're all billionaires <laughs> <laughs> it's just jeff bezos going like listen man like you know i like when steve jobs died man that was fucking crazy like <laughs> I smoked like nine joints that day and I still didn't, I still didn't get my buzz on, man. It was, it was fucking off. Phase Bezos, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's for the stage. Mm. A break from fi- for a break from fine dining, members have enjoyed an introduction to Tom Carriage for advice on healthy eating and sober conscious entertaining. But you can see that on the BBC. <laughs> also, again, everything they'll do <laughs> will suck. Ta- like these great chefs and photographers are going to teach them like one or two tricks. It's going to cost an enormous amount of money. And then like, it's just going to be people feeling good about making bad shit. I- I'm going to love it when like someone gets paid a million dollars to do a Scooby-Doo workshop for billionaires. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it also operates. Nice on the- key ring, Jeff. Did you make that yourself? <laughs> it also operates on the assumption that people with this kind of money want to do rational, fun things like normal people. It's like, whereas all the evidence we've seen so far indicates that billionaires are a more common use of their money would be like build a cult and make them all eat roadkill like that's the kind of brain length mm. they're operating on as opposed become to become extremely popular in American Samoa like, well you have a lot of free time <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean it, it's obviously that's very funny but it's also like a really curious statistic like what was it about like the people of American Samoa that Michael Bloomberg appealed to them above all like the residents of a tropical island that's soon to be subsumed by the sea <laughs> were like this five foot four billionaire guy really fucking speaks to me. Yeah, they're about to be subsumed by the sea. They need everyone to drink smaller what, sodas. What happened was he <laughs> br- he brought the br- he brought the Bloomberg terminal to American Samoa. So they were just getting like, really into trading. So, <laughs> for a break from fine dining, our members have. I'm sorry. At the other end of the spectrum, we arrange a bespoke champagne experience, but that focused on inspiring female pioneers. Every what? day is a school day forever for everyone. It's fancy like, oh, it's six. O- it's like fancy Prosecco mums, isn't it? Yeah. What if it was, what if it was the Oregon Trail, but it's all women? <laughs> Game-changing wellness experiences are also on offer, including a sleep master class with Lanzerhof at the Arts Club. Sorry, or- that was just words. Or a stay at Songsa, a private island resort where guests can support the creation of renewable energy and contribute to local education programs. Huh, so just more more being allowed near children. There's I more see. being there's more yes. more island stuff. Yeah. It's island time, baby. Like imagine Mark Zuckerberg teaching like children like code. It wouldn't even be creepy, it'd just be weird stuff about like repressed anger from like his Harvard days when he didn't match with anyone on the like Dumb app that he made. Uh, also, just, just tormenting children, but if you want to make a really good app, you want to be really good at coding, you got to shave your eyebrows. <laughs> Do it, kids. Do it now. Also, there's, like, a, there's two kids who are identical twins who he's just like ragging on constantly for reasons that no one understands. <laughs> you little pieces of shit, fucking looking the same little bitch. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to like because, Andrew Tate teaching like a kickboxing class at this, uh, on this yacht. So, but, but, it's, but it's, it basically like, sounds like it's like pay a thousand pounds a month to have a service. So you can pay extra like hundreds of thousands. So you can write a really great application essay to an Ivy League school or something. Yeah, everyone's all, I know everyone, it basically, they're not getting Joker-fied. They're getting Pete buttigieg <laughs> Everyone's just all, because like, all, like no, one who do, no one who does anything can be good at it. The chefs can't be just professional chefs. Like you can't be, like a, like a photographer being good at it. You can't like do renewable energy or teaching like children on some private resort island and be good at it. You have to be a billionaire dilettante who's just like existentially bored and pays a hundred thousand pounds a month to like, you know, the, the queen's nephew and then like a couple of his idiot friends to come and like send you abroad while they finance their very secret billionaire permanent um home base that's drifting between like 
you know, Bohemian Grove into Cannes Film Festival. So basically, it's Teach for America, Semester at Sea, and Mad Max Fury Road all in one. <laughs> and oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> noting the time, I think that might actually be all we have time for for today. So I want mm-hmm. to, first of all, thank Molly Goodfellow very much for coming and being with us today. <laughs> To thank all of you for coming out here today and braving the massive risks to life, limb, and lung. Hell yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot. You've been wonderful. This has been Trash Future. Have a splendid evening. Fantastic.